Yo, what is up guys? Lawson and Bounce here, and today we've got episode 66 for my NBA 2K14, my GM mode with the Los Angeles Lakers. And in today's episode, we've got some major trade news. But before we get to that part of the video, guys, I want to give another huge shout out to my man Arios. Now, right now, when I just said that, if you thought to yourself, wait, who's Arios? What are you doing? How are you not already subscribed to my man Arios' channel? This guy is an absolute beast when it comes to commentary. He does radio play by play style, and I'm telling you guys, he is just amazing with his videos. And I would not come in here in my video and tell you guys that somebody's an amazing commentator unless I honestly thought that. And I'm telling you, he is something special in the community. You don't see this too often. He's only got about 2,000 subscribers, but he deserves sons more. He's a hard worker, he's a great friend of mine, he shows me a ton of support, and I'm trying to show as much support as I possibly can back to him guys, because I'm telling you, he's not the average commentator. He's not the average person that you will see on YouTube. He is something different, and we could use people like that in the community. It's always refreshing to see those new styles, those new aspects of commentating, and this guy, he does sound exactly like a professional. So as a favor to me, as a favor to him, please go ahead, take a look at the description, make sure you click on his channel, and subscribe to him over there. I promise you, I promise you that you will not regret it. Alright guys, now getting right back into this video. So this trade you see right here, Joakim Noah, Nick Young, and DeAndre Liggins in return for Marcus Saul from the Memphis Grizzlies. This was a trade that we were taking a look at a few episodes ago. I had you guys vote on it in the comments section, and usually when we do votes, it's either 90% of you guys saying yes, or 90% of you guys saying no. Now this trade, this vote, was extremely close, it came down right to the middle. And I thought to myself, you know what, let me give Joakim Noah a game, let's see how he does, and that's why in the last episode, we played with Joakim Noah in the lineup. He was the starter, and to my surprise, he did not play just average, he actually did extremely solid. He was getting the offensive boards, he was scoring in the paint, he was playing defense well on the inside, he did some good work for us. But that was not enough to convince me to not pull the trade. What did convince me to hold on to Joakim Noble was something that you guys were saying in the comment section. Now guys, this is why I always ask you, let me know your opinions in the comment section. Because there have been so many times where you guys give me great ideas in the comment section, great points, and sometimes I use those ideas in my video. Now the point that you guys made in the comment section was, you know what, I know Joakim Noah, he does have an expensive salary for $14 million per year, but this is his last season. After this season, we can resign him for a lower amount. I doubt that he will be asking for $15 million a year. He will probably be asking for anywhere between 5 to 10, and that would be reasonable for a player of Joakim Noah's caliber. Marcus Saul, on the other hand, he is signed through 2018, and the salary would not help us at all. So we will decide to decline the offer. Now take a look at this. I remember we were talking about Zante Exum being off the bench, and how important it is to keep him happy while still making him a six man. But right now, as you can see, he's starting to get frustrated. Minus three rating, and look at that, zero morale. Exum feels like he is an impact player, which he is, on most teams, and would like a chance to prove himself to another organization. Please trade him if you can. Now as of now, Dante Exum is playing great for us as the 6th man, but you know what guys, he has a 2 year team deal, right now we are in the 2nd year, and if he's gonna stay unhappy, number 1, his play will not be as solid, and number 2, he's just gonna leave in free agency. So even though, he is a player that I want to keep on this team, I'm not too sure how much longer he's gonna stay. So guys, after taking a look at the trade finder, this is one of the results, and this is what we have come across. Dante Exum and our 2017 first round draft pick in return for the 22 year old Marcus Smart. They both came from the same draft class, and Marcus Smart is a very solid player. 83 overall, he could run the backup point guard position. So there are two ways to think about this. First of all, you might say to yourself, you know what, Dante Exum's probably gonna leave either way. We might as well trade him for a young and talented point guard like Marcus Smart. But on the other hand, 
What if Marcus Smart is also unhappy about being off the bench? What if he complains about being a sixth man and then his morale would also drop? In that situation, this trade would be a waste, but hey, it might be worth the risk. So what I need you guys to do is to let me know down below in the comments section, trade or no trade. Should we hold on to Exum or should we go for Smart? Let me know guys in the comments section because a lot of you guys have been following this series for a long time. We are at episode 66. At this point, you know how the team is. You understand the feel of the team and that's why I trust your opinions. So like I said before, let me know what you guys think, trade or no trade. Dante Exum in the first round pick in return for Marcus Smart. Now another thing to take a look at, Kobe Bryant. Look at those stats. About 17 points per game, 4 boards, 3.5 assists, and almost 1 steal. Now don't get me wrong, those are some very solid statistics, but don't forget guys, it's Kobe Bryant. In the first two seasons, he was going off, especially in the first season when we won the title. But right now at the age of 37, I do understand that his production and efficiency is falling. But we do have plenty of hope with Dean Strong, look at this man, a rookie, already with 16.8 points per game. He has been amazing for us thus far in his rookie season. Can you just imagine how good he might be in one season, in two seasons, in three seasons? He might be a superstar. Bledsoe, he's always been great, 13 points per game, 4 boards, and 5.2 assists. He's got the steals, he's even got the blocks. He is tied with Serge Ibaka for blocks per game. That shows how athletic this guy is. Zan Exum, 8.2 points per game, it's just not enough to get the job done, but guys you already know about the vote and the trade, so we'll see what happens in the next episode. Joakim Noah, we only had one game with him, so most of these statistics are from the previous team. So for us, thus far, he's doing great. Nick Young, Ben Udra, Jared Green, all of those guys, they don't exactly get too many minutes, but don't forget, we don't play 12 minute quarters guys, that's why many of these statistics are not exactly what they would be in real life, because we don't play 12 minute quarters, but when we do put in players like Jared Green and Tyson Chandler, even Wesley Johnson sometimes, their production is there. Next up, the standings. The Los Angeles Lakers, we are 7th in the conference, but it is a close race. As you can see, the Timberwolves just behind us at 8, 19 and 18. The Kings, along with the Jazz, 18 and 18. Even the Blazers are 18 and 18. So it is a very tight conference, a very close race between most of these teams. But hey, it's only December right now. We still have plenty of time to gain ground and move up in the conference. That way, if we can get a top 4 spot by the end of the season, we can have home court advantage in round 1 of the playoffs. But the division race is actually fairly close. We are only one game behind the Clippers. The Kings are behind us by one game as well, but the Warriors and Suns, fairly distant. I remember that in the first two seasons, the Warriors were a real threat to our team. But right now, they're not doing too well. So we just need to make sure that we win our matchups up against the Clippers, get the job done, and grab that division title. But I hope you guys all enjoyed the video, if you did and if you want to see the next episode to this series, make sure you leave a like down below. I will upload episode 67 once we hit 300 likes on this one. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to join LNU Nation for your number one source of all NBA 2K14, my GM mode, my team, and sons more to come. Follow me on Twitter at Lost and Unbound. That is the best place to reach me, and I'm always very interactive with viewers on Twitter, so guys definitely make sure you go ahead and follow me over there. Like I said before, my Twitter is at Lost and Unbound. Also, my Twitch channel will be in the description, and I try to live stream over there on Twitch several times per week at 7pm Eastern, and those live streams are always so much fun, doing the Legends Fantasy Drafts, doing the My Team Pack openings, all of that guys, so make sure you go ahead and follow me on Twitch, and that way you will get an email every single time I stream, and as always guys, I'm lost in and downs, and have a great day, peace out. 42 seconds remaining, we need to steal right here. Williams on the attack with the spin. We're reaching. Oh, we got it. Go! 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 Dean Strong, and he gets the two handed jam. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Let's go. Let's go. 32 seconds remaining. Do not 
expel them. Oh my goodness, look at that! 